Now, to give us more insights in terms of what's actually happening in eastern Ukraine, we are joined in by Dan Ashby. Dan, let me begin by asking you this. Now, this was a ceasefire that was agreed upon both by President Vladimir Putin of Russia and also the Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. What seems to have gone wrong? Well, there appears to be two violations of the ceasefire. At least that's what the Ukrainian side are saying. And it's telling that it appears to have happened within hours of this mm -hmm. grand ceasefire taking effect. The Ukrainian military saying that they were fired upon by small arms, by, as you say, anti-tank grenade launchers, just hours after the ceasefire started and then later at noon. Now, uh, the authorities on the separatist side have put out a, a statement saying that they have not witnessed any uh, ceasefire violation. So already discrepancies over what has actually happened. But this is just the latest in another ceasefire deal that already appears to be slightly unravelling a bit. The only thing in terms of hope for that ceasefire is that the Ukrainian military side said it did not fire back and they are still not going to fire back unless they have to in self-defence. So I think the ceasefire is still holding shakily, but a lot of concern about those two violations. Absolutely indeed. And this is not the first time that a ceasefire was agreed upon and then, you know, it, it was violated. You know, something that a lot of people would actually be looking at is, with this agreement now in place, can we now look at resolving this conflict, this larger conflict between Russia and Ukraine? Uh, it, it appears that Russia would be willing to cede control of some of the territories that it occupied in 2014, provided they are willing to grant greater autonomy. With Volodymyr Zelensky in power in Ukraine, are we seeing a move in that direction? Well, it appeared so at first. I mean, Zelensky's critics in Ukraine say he's being too soft on Russia. Take this ceasefire, for instance, where the Ukrainian side appears to not be firing back. There are people, hardliners in Ukraine, who are worried that's just going to give Russia the edge. And, and there are many Ukrainians who fear that Russia just has sinister motives here, that Russia's not really keen on a peace deal at all. Although it signed the Minsk Accords and says it wants to see Ukraine have full autonomy and have foreign troops and units removed, remember that all along Russia has actually denied being involved in this at all and yet it is part of these peace negotiations. So there are Ukrainians who fear that Russia has sinister motives in terms of keeping this going. As for the Russian side, they say they are genuine about peace and look at the phone call that uh, Putin and Zelensky had just before the ceasefire began. Look at the prisoner swap. Look at all they're doing. The Russian side says there's no interest for Russia in having an unstable Ukraine because of its gas pipelines and its international trade. So, yes, it appears that in the last few years trust has been building, but there are still some in Ukraine who suspect that Russia is not serious about peace at all. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed, Dan Ashby, for joining us from Moscow and getting us all those insights into this very important developing story. Let's now shift our attention to what is...